Our next story is very inspiring. Now, Athena Falidis is going to bring us a story. It's about a friend of hers, and it has to do with the Cancer Council. Let's have a look. Hi there, I'm Athena, and I'm here today to tell you all about an amazing event, the Sydney Relay for Life. I became involved in this event as a team member to support my dear friend Cheryl Ayres, who's a four-time cancer survivor. Relay for Life is a fundraising event for Cancer Council where teams of people walk around the track for 24 hours. The idea being that cancer never sleeps, so neither do we. So we're here on the track where people are walking and running all day today, tonight and tomorrow and raising money for such a great cause. So we're going to ask them why they're actually relaying and who they're relaying for. Hi there. Hey, how are you going today? I'm good. You having a great day? Yeah. So who are you here for today? I'm raising money for my grandmother who passed away from ovarian cancer last January. Her name's Maria. Yeah. Sorry to hear that, John. Yeah, on my team, uh, we're actually called Maria's Warriors. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, what are you guys up to? Just crawling. Crawling? That's pretty good. I've seen everybody else walking and running around here. So this is a new technique. Yeah, we just wanted to like challenge ourselves. Yeah, mix mm -hmm. it up a bit. Fantastic. I think that's awesome. Why not? Let's try something different. How about I crawl with you? Let's do some crawling. Come on, let's do it. Oh, this is great. I don't know if I'm up for this though. I'm like getting a bit old for this. All right, I'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. Um, I've been relaying for a few years now and um, in particular it's for all the friends of recent times that have come down with cancer, especially a recently a work colleague. So um, all of us in the office come together and uh, raise money. So we've done that for the last three years, I think. Well, you're here for a wonderful cause and um, I'm very proud of you and I'm sure everyone else is very proud of everyone here today. Um, this is a wonderful thing we're doing. We're here to represent Converging New South Wales, it's my work team um, and I've brought my family along because we have a lot of deaths in the family because of cancer. Um, my grandfather, my mum's sisters have all passed away from cancer and we're lucky enough that we have a survivor in the family, our auntie Nina, so yeah. <laughs> um, and also like it hit me hard of I think last year when I'd lost a cousin to cancer so here for her as well. We want to know about the baton. Who's going to tell us about the baton? Well the maker has actually already left for the day but um, we wanted to have something with Converger on it so we used the bubble wrap from work. Yeah we were recycling so we thought we would use it and label it with where we're from. <laughs> Fantastic. And it's something to do in the way you can just pop it. <laughs> All right. And, and I think you were saying that you're going to wake up someone when they're falling asleep along the track? Yeah. Well, someone that's going really slow because we're in the challenge, so whip them along. So <laughs> give them a whack, yeah? yeah? Okay. Have you, given, have you given any whacks today? No, not yet. <laughs> because I just started for the night your morning. <laughs> oh, She's wonderful. Been no. <laughs> She's been whacked, so. Oh, you've been naughty, have you? <laughs> well, have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're here um, in honour of quite a few people. Uh, one of our recent franchisees, Coral Brett, Betts and uh, Debbie Cleaver and uh, in a hope of survivor for my husband Nikki um, and in memory of uh, quite a few family members. So it was great listening to everybody's stories on the track but my friend Cheryl is about to speak in the hope ceremony so let's go and have a listen to her. You know a cancer diagnosis absolutely lives up to its reputation and it is all you expect it to be. You hear those words I'm sorry, but the results are positive and it's cancer. And your heart doesn't just beat, it thumps in your chest. A cold shiver that goes up my spine and it settles in the pit of my stomach. I'm pretty sure all the colour drains away from my face as my brain starts to comprehend what my gut is telling it and the reaction of fear from my body. For me, that was always the same. You see, four times I've sat across from doctors and been told I And whilst the emotions are different each time, that gut reaction is always the same. 
What it shows me is just how much fear we place in the word alone. Have you ever wondered how you'd cope with a major change to your life, like an accident or a serious diagnosis like cancer? Well, I can tell you from experience, it's probably better than you think. I know you may find this hard to believe and you do hear it from a number of survivors, but I do feel lucky. Not, of course, from the disease, but from the lessons I've learned and the events surrounding it. You see, I was like you, blissfully ignorant of my lymph nodes and all that they do to clean my blood and clear infections out of my body. And then eight years ago, back in 2008, it all changed. And I found myself saying something I never thought I'd hear coming out of my own mouth. Yeah, I, I, I've got lymphoma. Um, doctors tell me I'm lucky though, um, because it's a good cancer to get, if you're able to choose things like that. I can only imagine that they refer to it as good because it has a good survival rate and surgery isn't required. And I did get it early. But when the doctor told me, all I could think, all I remember is saying, not me, I don't get cancer. Like, other, other people get cancer, not me. It, it was very surreal. So cancer certainly invokes fear and really too many other emotions to mention. But on the flip side, surviving cancer comes from strength and love and zeal. And that's me. Like it was said, I feel I have a postdoctorate degree in surviving cancer. I'm not so much defined by the cancer that I had, but I am defined by surviving it. And as was said, I may have had cancer, but I don't think it ever had me. I also found I have a magic power, and that is to be able to turn most things into being a positive. My friends make me feel very loved and that keep me filling up. <laughs> I've got a couple of friends who've been through the same journey, and I tell you their survivorship is also contagious. How fortunate I am to have these people in my life, and most newly, Vicky Connerty. We inspire each other to grow and to stay strong. But I won't kid you, cancer really sucks. It doesn't discriminate, it's cruel, and it's, in, it's unpredictable. Going on the journey, as they say, is arduous, but surviving it makes you appreciate life. And so I say to you that cancer can also make you feel loved and appreciated like never before. It will bring your family together. The adoration and admiration will overwhelm you. It'll help you to recalibrate what's really important in your life. You'll gather a new understanding of your body. You'll meet new people. People will say, you look great. Have you had work done? <laughs> you save on shampoo and hairdressing appointments. Sorry, Athena, that's our hairdresser. Um, you'll be challenged, but you'll be inspired and motivated and humbled. And I think for me anyway, life gathered new meaning with peace and health, happiness and serenity at its core. So for me, there's also hope. And with hope, my amazing friends, my live long and prosperous, have gathered around me and shown me the love that you don't always get to feel in everyday life. It's truly awe-inspiring. I'm, <clears throat> I'm genuinely grateful to this wonderful group of people who support me every day and have done an amazing job in fundraising and being here all day. Deep breath. Love you, <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> and by now, I'm sure you'll also see why I admire the Cancer Council in their mission to create an Australia where cancer is no longer feared, but seen as a treatable and manageable disease. And with that, perhaps the greatest hope I've ever witnessed on this journey is the love and support shown by people just like you. That individuals and communities come together, raise funds, remember loved ones, but most importantly, 
you all feed the hope that we have in all of us to want a better future than we have today and one that is cancer free. Thank you. So if you would like to donate to this great cause, please visit the website below. Great work, everybody. See you next year. On three, everyone's going to put their hands in the air. You're going to wave them like you just don't care and scream. One, two, three. Woo!